Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about an entity that was discussed in details in the past lecture here. So I will go over the case very quickly. So we have this uh, six, 65 year old man, he's in good health. He has a uh, one month history of increasing impairment in the senses of the fourth and fifth digits. He also has weakness in the intrinsic muscles of the hand, the left hand. He discovers his difficulty in turning a key inside the lock. So basically from this presentation alone we can understand that we are talking about the ulnar nerve. Uh, as a reminder, the ulnar nerve sensory distribution distributes uh, the one half medial digits and its corresponding parts in the palm. Okay. Uh, as a reminder also, which muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve in the hand? Anybody? <laughs> well, my answer is all the above. Why about this question? It's because to emphasize why our patient in this specific case uh, has weakness in the hand, in the left hand, because it innervates a lot of muscles in the hand. So basically, I will discuss now what it could be causing these symptoms. We are talking about ulnar nerve uh, neuropathy, of course. Uh, we can put them in two categories, intrapent neuropathy and non intrapent neuropathy. Intrapent neuropathy uh, can be dissected into mechanical nerve compression or dynamic nerve compression, such as the consubluxation. It could, do, could also be traumatic, but it's not in our case. We don't have a history of trauma, so we could eliminate that. Could be also inflammatory, such as medial epicondylitis, uh, the golfer's elbow. Uh, residents don't have the golfer's elbow. We don't have time to play golf. <laughs> it could be also polyneuropathy, but not in our case, because it's is isolated in one hand. So we could eliminate that. Uh, well, on the left compression, most likely occurs in the upper limb. The most common location is the cubital tunnel. Uh, carpal tunnel syndrome is, uh, carpal tunnel is, is wrong because it's the median that they're passing through. I want to emphasize the point is that uh, the most common peripheral neuropathy is still the upper, in the upper extremity is still carpal tunnel syndrome. And cubital tunnel syndrome is the, uh, comes uh, second as the most common uh, peripheral neuropathy of the upper extremity. A little bit of anatomy. We have the medial epicondyle, we have the olecranon, we have the arcuate lig ligament, and we have the ulnar nerve de depicted here. And we have also the posterior ulnar eloquent artery nearby the edges, nearby the nerve, the ulnar nerve. Okay, see, so, so we know the clinical history uh, for this patient with ulnar neuropathy. What we should do next? So we have These options, but it's kind of a tricky question because the option that is next should be physical examination. It's very, it's very important. So physical in, in the physical examination, we have a small papillary non-tender mass in the area of the left cubital tunnel. So now we can focus on the cubital tunnel. Now we can do some imaging. So. What we can choose, we, we could choose ultrasound, it's a good imaging modality. As it, it was discussed uh, earlier, a dynamic, uh, dynamic assessment and it's low cost and it's available. So this is the normal anatomy of the cubital tunnel. We have the olecranon, we have the medial epicondyle, and we have the ulnar nerve depicted here. Here's in longitudinal view, the ulnar nerve, and this is a normal anatomy. Now we'll see in our subject, in our patient. We have this uh, oval round mass in longitudinal view, and we have the ulnar nerve very adjacent to this mass. So most probably this mass is causing the, the symptoms. Here in transverse, we see the ulnar nerve, and with no separation planes, we have also the, uh, the mass. Now we, we can continue to MRI. Why? Uh, the MRI has advantages of like high resolution. 
Uh, we got lucky in seeing the mass in ultrasound, but sometimes we don't. That's why we have we should analyze uh, uh, and do MRI. Uh, we also see in MRI secondary abnormalities that we couldn't see in ultrasound, such as uh, signal intensity changes in growth muscles, such as edema in acute stages or subacute, and fatty atrophy in chronic uh, uh, in chronic uh, in chronic situations. The chronic denervation. When is the earliest times of denervation MRI we can see? It was, it was also discussed earlier in the lecture. We, we see it pretty early. We see it in 20, 24 hours. From 24 hours to 48 hours, we see signs of denervation, which basically constitutes of edema of the innervated muscles. In contrast, uh, we, we compare it to electromyography that we see signs not until two and three weeks. So and basically in MRI we have the upper hand to see acute uh, changes. So in the MRI we see the mass in the cubital tunnel. We see hyperintense signal with a round hyperintense ring around it. Here in, here in terms of a small, we, have, we see the mass and we, we don't see clearly the ulnar nerve. But more distally, we see it more clearly, resuming its normal structure. Here we have different views, distally to the mass, and we see it at the level of the mass on our nerve, and here we see it proximally. So a surgery was advised because of the symptoms, and an uh, intraoperative photograph, uh, we see the mass here, very adjacent to the ulnar, or to the ulnar nerve. In pathology, it was spindle cell hemangioma. So my take-home message is that cubital tunnel syndrome is a very important entity, and it comes second only to carpal tunnel uh, syndrome. Uh, it, it's usually caused by repetitive occupational trauma, but rarely is caused by a, a mass lesion, such as in our case. It could be also different lesions, such as osteochondroma, ganglion, lipoma metastasis, and like in our case, it was hemangioma. Thank you very much.